नमस्ते हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम अगेन टू माय एन कोर्स रोल ऑफ क्राफ्ट इन टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी मॉड्यूल 25 व्हिच इज द समरी ऑफ व्हाट वी सॉ इन द प्रीवियस फोर मॉड्यूल्स एंड वील बी जस्ट क्विकली सींग वट ऑल वी ब्रश अप इन दोज फोर मॉड्यूल्स सो वील बी टॉकिंग अबाउट क्राफ्ट एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन इंटीरियर आर्किटेक्चर हाउ वी डिस्कस द डी कोडिंग ऑफ सिस्टम्स how do we map the transformation through time and technology and then the references so when we talked about decoding systems in the previous modules we discussed starting from you know how the human figure was taken as a reference to relate to the proportions and you know to come up with ratio for designing columns so here we saw the footprint of a human body being uh taken as a reference to understand the proportions of a column and we saw the dorian column and we saw this corianthan column as well so we began discussing from here we also saw how in some you know uh, historic interior architecture uh, examples we see the uh, analysis and the existence of different kinds of uh, systems uh, when we talk about you know here the temple of athena and we see in plan and in elevation the pythagorean triangle which is achieved and how it gives the geometry to the entire form and we see the existence of grids and how the entire structure is you know it follows a sort of this grid so these kind of uh, kinds of systems were in place and we study them and we try to understand them we saw all of this and i'm not going to elaborately discuss today we also saw the emergence of catalogs you know like there were catalogs of furniture the catalogs of space making elements and catalog of ornamentation also material wise the catalog focusing on the metal casting catalogs focusing on the you know timber joinery and things like that so that also gave a sort of a system which one could refer to and then apply in their designs so that kind of system also was there in place we saw this very interesting analogy and how a system was created where the learning from the botanical sciences was applied in interior architecture and this kind of you know interrelationship over there we just saw the learning from one field applied to the other field there was this very interesting uh, page from the uh, very rare old book where we saw the classification in architecture so this again is a sort of a system system of classification and we saw you know how it was classified in terms of the hydraulic applications and in terms of the civil works so this also we discussed we talked about the vastu vidya of india and how there is already a sort of uh, rich uh, interior architecture tradition and the way the dwellings were made the houses were created what was the science behind them and what was a sort of a system that was followed what uh, were the principles of design which were embedded within that system how it was applied not just on the um, building level but also on a city level so we saw the case of city of jaipur so all those examples we saw we also saw this very interesting you know team of four experts which was defined again in the vastu vidya and we talked about the sthapati the sutra grahin the takshaka and the vardhaki so we discussed this and um, we try to understand the traditional knowledge systems that you know the interior architecture of india has been following through a very very old time and we try to very briefly understand the vastu purush mandala and how again it was very profoundly used in indian interior architecture and what was a sort of a system that it explained through which the uh, spatial configuration and the uh, Uh, sanctity of the space the energy points were achieved and we talked about the theory of mansara and you know how there are, there have been different texts which have been uh, translated and till today we have lot of references to follow that to understand the systems that were put in place you know by the ancestors and how the knowledge is being transferred from there we uh, discussed uh, very briefly but you know in a very interesting uh, manner how we see the application of mathematics in interior architecture what kind of system do we see and what is the role of geometry what kind of um, geometry gives us stability so all those examples we saw 
we saw the example of the magnificent Taj Mahal and how the symmetry is achieved in this building. And we also saw the example of Brihadeshwar temple, it is not on the slide right now and we saw how the isosceles triangle which was being formed there created a very stable geometry. Then we try to understand system also in terms of some guiding principles. So, when we talk about you know a system in place and to analyze or decode the interior architecture, we talk about it in terms of orientation, axis and symmetry and we saw this example of you know a mosque from Gujarat and we see you know how the orientation helps us align the building because towards Kaaba here the west we have and then we talked about the symmetry here as well and we discussed about the axis and how this also creates a sort of a system in which we could organize our spaces, we could analyze them and we could also decode them and understand what are the underlying principles of making. Then some more continuing uh, to the previous slide, we also saw you know how gri the grid helps us understand the system in place, how the module also helps us in understanding the spatial configuration. So, these are the different nodes of a system which help us analyze the uh, interior architecture. Then we also saw some examples like this is from Uttarakhand, this is Koti Banal architecture and how there is a system in place where we see you know the layering, which layer comes first and how this elaborate construction happens. So, this kind of system we saw, we also saw uh, some you know images and uh, description of these wooden traditional houses from Kumau, where there is a system in place, how these uh, karigars and the stakeholders communicate. So, what is the local parlance and what kind of language is used there and what kind of cultural connotation also it has. So, it is sometimes it is very interesting if we try to understand the kind of vocabulary you know is being used on the site and does it also have some connotation with the day to day objects and things like that. So, when we talked about systems we also discussed how technical drawings also give us a sort of a system to understand interior architecture to analyze it. So, here what we see is a technical drawing and it gives us all the details you know of what material it is and what is the thickness and what is the level at which a certain element is placed or a certain function is placed and that is how it is a system for us to understand a piece of interior architecture or the building craft that goes into the making of it. And very interesting systems we discussed and uh, you know how DICRC has come up with this XYZ axis system and we try to map some intangibles, tangibles, we have some framework for the analysis and you know how we analyze the craft and the interior architecture in terms of the surface, in terms of the volume and in terms of the composition. So, we discussed all of this matrix that has been designed by them. Another one you know where the process and application is also discussed and uh, there is also a discussion on the craft, craft persons, materials, tools, techniques and the entire context. So, we discussed this operational craft matrix as well. And we saw some examples which were you know uh, analyzed through the matrix that has been designed. So, in terms of intangibles, how we decode a certain space or interior architecture and then you know how we map the tangibles like ornamentation like in this case, we saw this uh, in the previous modules. We also try to understand one framework of analysis and how the expressions have been analyzed and how uh, on field the work is done and what is the methodology adopted. So, sketches and images and the drawings all of this we had seen. We try to also understand you know while we are talking about system how the mapping of technique is done and how within one prominent technique we could also see the different underlying methods and the different ways of doing the craft. We also saw the discussion on motifs which is again a part of the matrix that we saw in the previous slide and how this system was used to analyze interior architecture and building crafts. Then we saw the example of mirror work in Udaipur and this is the system of classification here 
and we also saw a system of working you know in what stages the work happens and what is the system that has been adopted. So, that is again a sort of a system which is being given to us. We saw this example of order of painting and arch face and what is the system in place, how it has been done. So, we understood through these examples you know different systems through which we could decode the building crafts and interior architecture and sometimes and most of the times. It also helps us analyze the interrelationship between the craft and interior architecture. And then we tried to understand the craft and technology in interior architecture by focusing on transformation and that transformation happening through time also slightly we went towards technology. So, through time and technology is what we discussed and we took the examples of terracotta and stone as material. So, beginning from material how the material terracotta and stone has brought changes transformation in interior architecture and building crafts through time and technology is what we also discussed in the previous modules. And we saw this research uh, where it was shown how terracotta being used as an object currently is being used for construction purposes and how this entire evolution or transformation has happened. And we try to understand you know clay and how in different forms the clay is being used and where does the you know discussion on terracotta begin. So, for that we have to first understand clay and the different uses which it has already been catering to. So, here rammed earth. And beginning from here we try to understand what actually terracotta is. We try to understand its definition, we try to understand its formation, its timeline, how it is different from brick and where historically we have seen its mention and you know how it has been used in which forms, objects of daily use and somewhere as an economic solution for marble in the building industry as well. So, we saw all those you know uh, all this journey and the transformation that has happened. We tried to understand different uh, shapes, sizes and forms and how they were achieved with this material. This we discussed and we also tried to see how you know in different parts of India again terracotta is used in different ways. So, here there is an example of Rajasthan and we see it being used as a mural, it is used in the interior of this house and then here also we see on the facade of a building. So, we saw all this and tried to understand the transition, transformation and how it was used as the surface embellishment material. Then through technology, now we have different kinds of standard materials in the market. There are pavers, there are tiles and they are used in different purposes and there are different kinds of technical drawings that explain us the usage and the details through which that uh, accuracy could be achieved on site. We saw these flooring tiles and paper blocks, they are again made out of terracotta and we could make different patterns and composition and use it in our landscaping and for different you know pavements. And again we saw the transformation in terracotta through technology and there are different kinds of applications that we see now. Again we saw these examples of different products which are being used and some more things here the bottle rack and this module which is standardized and could be used and available in the market. And this is again the main slide that talks about how it is now used in construction industry. So, the hollow terracotta blocks and how they are used for making you know walls, parapets and different functions and different space making elements. So, this entire journey we had tried to understand in the previous modules. Then we tried to see also another material stone and starting from the stone hench to the contemporary use where it is you know stone is used more like a cladding and different furniture pieces also structurally which are um, structurally also stone is used but the structures are lighter than what it used to be earlier. So, that journey also we mapped we saw the stone hench we saw the great hypostyle hall in Egypt and the use of stone in this historic building. We came across the Notre Dame Cathedral and the detailing here we were focusing on the stone in terms of the detailing not just structure also the ornamental details. 
and we were talking about the Parthenon which is all done in stone and how beautifully the proportions have come up and structurally how sound that building was. We talked about the pyramids, the very famous pyramids and how they had this structural geometry and how it was all constructed out of stone. So, we discussed all these historical examples. We talked about the uh, Roman aqueduct and how aqueduct a very important uh, piece of interior architecture which was required to bring water from far off places to the interior of the city for different purposes was constructed with the medium of stone and how that material facilitated that construction. So, we saw this kind of interrelationship between you know the material, the purpose it solves and the building craft and interior architecture. So, those interrelationships are becoming clear. Uh, the more we discuss about the material, the more it would be clear to us how the associated tools and how the property of that material facilitates into the construction of uh, facilitates the construction of a certain interior architecture for a certain purpose. We saw the baths of Karakala, another example in stone and then we saw some more examples. We saw the St. Peter's Basilica, the very famous uh, Peter's Basilica. We saw the examples from India. We talked about the Ajanta caves all in stone over here. We talked about the Elora caves. We talked about the cave number 16 which is very famous and this is a monolithic structure and it is the Kailashna temple and lot of people visit here. We discussed this. We discussed about the erotic sculptures of Khajuraho. We discussed about the stepped wells in Gujarat, all done in stone. We talked about the very famous Meenakshi temple in South India and we talked about the interior where this hall of thousand pillars uh, is there and we also talked about the ornamentation and the entire form and structure of the temple. We talked about some narrative relief uh, sculptures done in stone and how the scholar Vidya Dahejia has studied them and tried to understand the modes of narration and she has brought out the Jataka stories of you know Prince Siddhartha and she has uh, tried to explain them and how stone as a medium enhances that narrativity. This is what she has told and we discussed about it. So, all these details in stone and how they tell the stories. So, this is the monkey Jataka and we see the monkey and the trees over here and how the story is being told through the medium of stone craft. We saw some more examples of stone, interior architecture and building craft. Then we discussed about the very famous Taj Mahal and the prominent use of white marble. We also touched a little base and tried to understand the origin and type of stone based on that origin. We also tried to understand the stone types based on varied finishes that we see here in this slide. And then we tried to talk about some more finishes here. Continuing with that, we tried to also understand the geographical distribution of Indian stones. And we saw some remarkable examples which geographical part of India has which kinds of stones and what are the famous historical examples in that particular geographical region and what kind of interior architecture was constructed out of those stones. So, we again elaborately saw this geographical distribution. We also went through this uh, system of classifying stones in terms of building and veneer stones and sculpture and object carving stones. We saw the traditional uses of stones vis-a-vis -vis the contemporary uses of stones and the different kinds of products and uh, different kinds of applications on different scales that is what we uh, brushed through. We saw some plates where we see the application of stone and how the um, you know this compilation help us understand what are the different kinds of uh, stone applications. So, here we also see the prominent use of furniture and we saw some examples like this the inbuilt furniture. So, we discussed about that. We saw some uh, uh, images which explained us the contemporary usage of stone and we see uh, some decoration here and you know something very simple here. So, all these different examples we saw. Some more examples that we saw and how you know uh, the various kinds of applications on walls. So, here we see that taking wall as a space making element, how stone is applied there in different ways. 
We also saw this example of stone flooring. This is again the application of stone. Continuing with the flooring, we saw some more examples and some contemporary uses in how stone is used in the temples for you know for making temple, for storages, for different other elements that could be decorative for of course the idols. So, the use of stone continues in many different ways, but with changed expressions. We uh, had a little discussion on different kinds of tools that are used while working on the stone and we just saw the different palette of the tool, different kinds of tools within a family. We saw this again and we tried to see uh, and understand how in contemporary times the tools, machinery, technology is all changing and the use of stone and its applications are also changing. So, we talked about computer numeric controlled machines and the computer aided manufacturing and how robotics is also coming into picture and a lot of work is now machine done and not hand done and at times it is a combination of both. Again some more modern machinery we saw and how it works. We saw some very fascinating contemporary examples of stone. Now, where stone is used, but the structure is lighter, the application is in a very different way. So, we saw some examples like this, where we see this ventilated stone ventilated rain screen facade here. This example we saw, we saw this opera house and how the stone is used here. This is the interior of the energy center in United States. We saw some pictures from here and this is again the headquarters of Venus marble and here again in different ways the stone is used and we just ran through these contemporary examples briefly. The uh, example from India, this is in temple in Vrindavan and how elaborately it is done in marble with all robotics and artisans coming together with different kinds of tools and machinery. So, this is a contemporary example and we saw that. Some more examples, this is a stone pavilion that we see here. Some very interesting forms now that could be achieved in stone. So, you know the heavy material that it was considered and today we take it as a flexible light material and we can create any form out of it. That is something which has really uh, you know uh, found uh, a lot of interest in its contemporary explorations. So, people just try to understand the flexibility and come up with different forms. So, here again this is stone and we see a very interesting form over here, the hyper vault. So, this is one contemporary exploration. This is the another one that we saw the application of granite and here we see in these three you know towers how the cladding is done. So, this is limestone clad residential towers and how the stone is used for cladding that we saw. We saw the uh, apple center in Singapore and how this handcrafted stone staircase creates a nice volume within that we saw. We saw some interesting furniture, somewhere it is stone, somewhere it is composite material and we, we saw these contemporary examples. There are very few, uh, I mean there could be more. There is another very interesting project that we did not see in the module. So, it is by uh, Studio Lotus and they have done this very famous project RAS, where they have used the stone for you know creating folding windows. So, the, uh, the stone that is used is uh, light and it further it is made light by creating punctures and then it could be you know used for making folding windows. If you want to see and know more about it, it is a very interesting project. So, please read about it. So, we saw all these uh, modules in the last week. And next time when we are going to meet, we are going to talk about overview of the craft sector today and we will we'll try to understand this sector in a brief overview. References for your benefit, this is particularly for the stone related lecture that we had and then there are some more books which we have been seeing all through and which are also important for this module. This is a sort of a compilation of most of them, some more, more references for you. Thank you.